Our all-time favourite band, Hertz, have just dropped a new single. There's a few articles out there and I found a particular bit of buzz. Yeah, I found a good article. After after their standard viral, secret, encrypted messages that they do at the beginning, there's there been an article that I want to read to you. Oh, nice. I'm really excited because also, Kat's reading it to me under the guise of um, recording a video because I really don't read. Like, <laughs> Kat sends me so many articles and I'm just like... Yeah, I'll read that later. And they're like, oh, did you read the article? I was like, no, but give me the gist. And I will read it to you. Thank you. Hertz have marked their return with a slick new single, Voices, which frontman Theo Hutchcraft said was driven by darker elements of pop. Having been teasing fans online for the past few weeks, the Manchester synth pop duo today, Friday, May the 15th, shared their first new material since 2017's personal pop album, Desire. Following the brighter sound of the last record, Theo Hutchcraft and Adam Anderson have sought to return to their pop noir roots. Can I just interrupt? Yeah. We read an article like a couple of years ago, I think for, was it their second or third album? Second album. Second album, where they basically said that to write a new album, they had to lock themselves in isolation in a shitty flat in Manchester. And eat beetroot sandwiches. Yeah, and just like be completely depressed. And so I'm getting those vibes again. Yep. We wanted to get back to essence of what we do and who we are, Frontman Hutchcraft told Enemy. We had to fall in love with the type of music we originally set out to make. We've always been drawn in by the darker elements of pop music. With lyrics inspired by isolation, desperation and mania, Hutchcraft said... <laughs> That the themes behind voices had become oddly prescient in the wake of the coronavirus lockdown. The last few years have been all over the place for the pair of us, he said. I was desperate to get that type of sentiment out. It's a strange and paranoid pop song, which isn't something that you hear very often. It's looking at how the mind can be both a force for good and a force for evil. A lot of our music is very emotionally raw, but there are depths we've yet to mine. Voices is probably as raw as the sentiment gets for me. It's something I've never really felt able to write about for a while. I hope people see that and brings them closer to who we are. Yep. Yeah. He continued, it's an odd time to release it, but it feels good because there's a message in the song that is hopeful. It's about having the power to change and deal with those things. Hopefully people can find that. He's so tortured. <laughs> Hutchcraft <laughs> promised that more new music would be released in the months ahead, following on voices with similar themes of introspection and soul searching. While working on their new record, Hutchcraft found new ways to overcome psychological issues for a turbulent time. I started to use blind therapy. Can where, I explain some of the promotion images? Yeah, where you wear a blindfold to deprive yourself of sight for certain periods of time to stimulate your other senses. You have to live as blind. It opens up your mind's eye and you get a little more creative. You start for an hour, then build up to half a day, two days, and then you come out the other end in a daze. It weirdly helped and got me back on track. I'm kind of into that. Sometimes I like testing myself around the house by like being complete, closing my eyes completely and seeing how I can navigate it yeah. by like my mental map of the space. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the next paragraph. It's been a strange time because I spent the first two weeks of lockdown living with an octopus in my house. What? Like, goals? Dreams? How? <laughs> what happened to the octopus? Did they have to socially distance? I've got a friend who does research on the consciousness and behaviour of octopuses and asked me if I would have one in my house so it could interact with a human being while the lab was shut. So I set one up in my living room next to my TV. It was called Arnold after Schwarzenegger because it was the strongest in the group. <laughs> I love it. I like, I'm kind of jealous of both entities in that situation. Partly I want to have uh, octopus as a pet and also I wouldn't mind just being around for your hot crap. Yeah, just being in his living room by his yeah. TV. Just be like, here's a tissue, please stop crying. <laughs> he went on, it was fun and fascinating. I had to play games with it and feed it. So I had an isolation <laughs> friend for two weeks before it went back to the lab. <laughs> That's <laughs> amazing. That's <laughs> like, it's so on brand with me. No wonder I love Hertz and Theo Hutchcraft and lessons. They are extremely intelligent. They're like aliens. They have some sort of sentience and consciousness that is sort of like our own. I didn't see anyone else for two weeks, just me and Arnold the octopus. There was an intense bond I wouldn't have developed otherwise. <laughs> like I always say, if octopuses could last longer, they'd be our lord and slave master. Exactly. As for clues for what's to come, Hutchcraft said that fans should keep an eye on their socials for more puzzles of the band's channel on Telegram. Mm. People are bored, so we thought it would be good to give people some kind of challenge to engage with each other, especially as our fans are spread all over the world. We created the puzzles because we wanted to give people a sense of how it feels to be going round and round inside your head. 
I wanted people to feel that over analytical process that you have when you go through mania. So like Kat really loves researching mm -hmm. and stuff. So I like saw the things um, and I was like, nah, I can't be bothered. But Kat is like full on went on researchy mode. And... I'm not sure I found anything that's actually like relevant. There were other people who actually kind of got to the bottom of what the puzzle seemed to mean. What was that? Just like release dates oh, and things like okay, that. I see. So yeah, the, the last thing it says is more news on Hertz fifth album is expected in the coming months. I'm really excited. Like, I, like, kind of upset that I didn't get to partake in the Hertz original viral marketing. Oh, yeah, the Spotify. We yeah. should listen to it. Yeah, like, we should totally listen to I it. I actually Googled it and I found a link to, like, the first track on Spotify and from there you can do the rest of it. Oh, that's amazing. So basically, Hertz's production company wanted to try and reach out to their target audience, which was me at the time, 21 to 25 year olds, or 18 <laughs> to 25 year olds. And the whole concept was that uh, young people were moving away from radio, so how do you get them to engage with a new band? And they were sort of like, well, what if we did a Spotify campaign that looked people in mm. so a friend of Theo's wrote this story this choose your own adventure story was it his octopus it wasn't about the octopus I'm afraid 10 years too soon <laughs> the choose your own adventure story where mm. you have the first part that played as an advert I think Spotify were really keen to promote this so yeah. they let them um, trailer it loads which is how I heard it and then followed it and they had no real reference to it being about this band it was just a choose your own adventure story mm. and then at the if you got to the end of one of the stories, yeah. then you got to hear a track from the album. Nice. Yeah. So my first interaction with Hertz was on ITV's morning TV show, yeah. whatever it was, and you had Theo's like singing the first song. Wonderful of... Life? Yeah. Mm. And like, at first I was like, he's a bit pretentious, because he had like his whole handkerchief and just sort of like <laughs> making love to the mic on at the stand and just like, and you had Adam like mournfully in the background like he normally is. And I, like my housemate Noel was like, mm. oh my God, I love them. They, yeah. they remind me of like 80s over the topness. And I was like, nah, I think they're a bit up for us. And then like gradually like it was an earworm and I really mm. liked it, but I never followed through to listen to an album. Mm -hmm. And then when I met you, you were like, oh my God, Hertz is amazing. <laughs> and then I got into them uh, from your enthusiasm, I think ever since it's always been like a bonding thing. Mm -hmm. Whenever a new song drops, like that's part of a new album, we get really excited and we're mm -hmm. like, oh my God, did you listen to it? And listen to it over and over again and be like, oh, I'm not sure about it, but I know it's going to grow on me. Cut to like six to 12 months later, we're in the crowd of like one of the two only concerts that they do in the UK. <laughs> and we're just like bopping to that song. It's great. I've seen them four times. I've seen them for uh, on the tour for every album. Mm. And you and I have seen them together three times, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Glasgow, Manchester. And London. Yes. Yeah, the London gig that we went to is in the music video for Nothing Will Be Bigger Than Us. Nice. Like we're somewhere in that crowd, which is quite exciting. It was the day before Valentine's Day yep. and we'd broken up. Yeah. And um, we both kind of had partners at the time. So we woke up together on Valentine's Day mm. sharing a room. Sharing a bed, in fact. Yeah. At an Airbnb. <laughs> like, just down the road from... Brixton Academy. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I just remember that. And then we met your other ex. <laughs> yeah, we went, I went and had breakfast with, with a former ex just to have a catch-up. So, and like... Was, I spent Valentine's Day with two exes. <laughs> It's the most hurts thing you could do, yeah, really. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Wallowing in the past. In the past. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching some of their videos earlier and it just occurred to me how Somebody to Die For has the most melodramatic music video of yeah. any music video ever. Like, it's so ridiculous. There's religious iconography. Mm. Theo has these little round sunglasses and little black gloves that make him oh, look like a yeah. Nazi in a film. <laughs> like, oh it, it's like so bizarre. He looks like he should be in an Indiana Jones film. Yeah, and then all of the shots of Adam are either him playing a typewriter on a piano <laughs> or him like playing a guitar but like looking off to the distance. It's so, really so I bizarre. Don't know if it does. Yeah. But like Hertz do, do have some really good videos. Like the one where they, they're dancing on the car uh, he's dancing on the car. Yeah. Lights. Lights. Yeah. Lights is probably my favourite. It's probably then, my favourite Hertz song ever. Yeah. It's really good. And that outfit is, that he's wearing is mm -hmm. very good. And yeah, the master Theo, outfit. Theo actually dances. Yeah, like, that's he's a shot. great dancer. So there's another video that I like where mm -hmm. it's like the events of the narrative is all played backwards. Mm -hmm. Beautiful ones. Yeah, beautiful ones. I mm -hmm. really love that video as well. Yeah, they do really good videos. So check out their music. Yeah. Watch their videos because mm -hmm. they kind of do accompany like the song. Yeah. And give it more emotion, which is what videos are meant to do, but like... 
To me, their new song, their new single, Voices, mm. sounds like the kind of melancholy and darkness of their first two albums, mm -hmm. but it also has a bit more of the kind of like funky danciness and sort of more international sound of their later albums. Yeah. And I think it's going to be a grower for you. I think you're going to really enjoy it. Yeah. Um, I, I already enjoy it. It's just that I haven't had the opportunity to like over listen to it. Because yeah. when I start over listening to things, my partner starts going, she listens to that song again. <laughs> <laughs> you, do. you were like, oh, it's got some darkness elements of this mm -hmm. and this and this, and then like seeing like your interpretation of the song mm -hmm. immolated in their actual words yeah. and intentions. That was that was really good to see for it. It's like you are. I'm so in tune with them. Yeah, I do feel like the journey and my kind of life journey. I had the same thing I think with Patrick Wolf, mm -hmm. like where an album comes out and you're like this is where I am at my life as well. Yeah. And then the next album comes out and you've grown as a person and so have they, and, yeah. and you're kind of at a similar place again. Um, Patrick Wall should release a new album. Mm. That's all that's missing from my life, really. Mm -hmm. Did you enjoy me reading you that article? I really enjoyed it. So I hope you enjoyed our Hearts tirade. Like, I know it's a very niche market of like people that like us and then people that like Hurts and then the cross, but hopefully like our enthusiasm inspires you to go listen to them. Like we're not being paid for this. We just love them so much that we want other people to enjoy the melancholy and the lows of hurts, mm -hmm. but then also the highs and happiness of mm -hmm. hurts. Thank you so much for watching. And take care of yourselves. Bye. Ciao, Betsy. <laughs> what? <laughs> why is that your sign off? I, I've done it in a couple of videos. Yeah. And I'm just like, why not? That's your thing now. Yeah.